Hi, welcome to Exam AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 68, OST and DPA. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain starts with Describe Identity, Governance, Privacy, and Compliance Features, passes through Describe Privacy and Compliance Resources. Our granular skill title is Describe the Purpose of the Online Services Terms, that's OST and the Data Protection Addendum, that's DPA. You can go to the table of contents for this entire guide and get links to all the videos by going to timw.info slash az900sg. I'm going to do this presentation entirely in demo, so let's do it. Okay, let's dig into this OST business. If you do a Google search for Microsoft Azure OST, you'll come to this page called Licensing Terms. And I want to draw your attention to this first paragraph. Let's look at it together. It says that there's a new product term site that combines everything from product terms and online services terms into a single easy to navigate doc. Because the exam mentions this page, I'm going to spend most of my time here, but then I'll end the demo. We'll go check out the product term site. Basically, this is where you read all of the licensing throughout all of the Microsoft products. Now, we're concerned with Microsoft's online services because this study guide and the certification, of course, deal with Microsoft Azure. Think of the nearly 200 or so products that exist in Azure. Each has its own license terms, and Microsoft needs a place to put all of those acceptable use terms and usage terms and support terms, hence the need for this website. All right. So if we come down here first, it says that our product terms contains all the terms and conditions on how you get licenses for the online services based on your language. So if I click English, for example, a Microsoft Word document comes down that I'll open directly. I've got Office 2019 installed on this system. Microsoft, of course, is constantly adding new products to their portfolio, and they make changes to their license terms, so they regularly update this document, hence, I guess, why they keep it in Microsoft Word format. We can see over on the left the headings throughout the document, or we could take a look at the old school table of contents. Let's take a look at both, actually. It's talking about their Windows Server and Desktop Operating System products and how the different licensing work per core, server, and all that good stuff. We're, of course, concerned with the online products, so let me try to find... There we go. Well, that's on-premises Dynamics 365. Let's see. System Center, Windows. There we go. Online Services. So it looks like on page 52 of 129, we start getting into the documentation here. This is an important doc for you to have as a Microsoft Azure customer so that you and your team can do due diligence to figure out exactly the scope of your usage, what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do with the various Azure products. I notice here under reservation options, this is where it's giving you the terms to doing reserved instances. Let me zoom in a little bit. And this is important because you might be doing an Azure reserved instance and realize that you need to renegotiate with Microsoft. Can you do that? And what are those terms? So I think you get the general idea here under product terms. Terms doesn't refer to vocabulary terms. It refers to contractual conditions on how Microsoft is supporting you. Now, here's a separate section for the online service services terms. Let's click English. And it looks like Microsoft put their OST in a separate document. Again, it's Microsoft Word. It's a little bit confusing, of course, because we might think to ourselves, well, didn't we see this same information in the previous document? And my guess is yes, there's a lot of overlap. But all you need to know for the AZ900 exam is that if they talk about the OST, they're talking about the web application where you can download the latest and greatest lists of contractual terms and conditions for the Microsoft Azure products. Lastly, the DPA is called the Data Protection addendum. And let's just take a look at what the text says here. When you subscribe to an online service under the terms of the OST, the data processing and security terms are covered in this addenda. So it looks like Microsoft has a separate terms and agreements document specifically with regard to data and security. And again, that makes all the sense in the world. I don't know how up you are on tech news, but the solar winds breach is all over the news as I'm recording this lesson in late December 2020. And what's that all about? It's about security and it's about protecting proprietary data. So if I click the DPA English link, we, as you would expect, get a another Microsoft Word document. 
where it's going, who owns your data? Of course, it's your data. What is Microsoft's responsibility? What are the customer responsibilities? What's going on with data encryption and auditing? Good stuff if you like that kind of thing. I really don't like it, to be honest. <laughs> but there's plenty of people making great livings in InfoSec and compliance who do. Lastly, like I said, you want to be in the real world up on when Microsoft is shifting. And it looks like they're shifting. Instead of maintaining these documents separately, there's this product terms site here we'll click to now it looks like it's called commercial licensing terms or product terms where we have a unified navigation over on the left in terms of on-premises as well as cloud-based products it looks like we select a program from the top drop down so if we're working with a cloud solution provider it looks like we can just drill into those so the exam probably won't mention this because it's early days but I would say in summary make sure you understand the OST and the DPA for for your exam and for the real world focus on this v2 site for learning resources i just have two one is for the microsoft licensing terms what i call the v1 site the short link there is timw.info slash ost1 if you want the v2 or the product term site that's timw.info slash ost2 great another lesson down the next episode is called reservations and spot pricing i look forward to seeing you then in the meantime you can find me on twitter at tech trainer tim all of my plural site content is in the library there timw.info ps my website is techtrainertim.com take good care